Hi, this is Lance Culver, and this is going to be a tie flow tutorial. In this video, I'll be using tie flow to simulate a very basic version of a shock assembly, something you might see on a big truck or piece of equipment. Something similar to this is a smaller element of a more complicated simulation that I'll be making a future video on. So if you haven't already subscribed, it's probably a good idea to do that now so you don't miss that. And create a helix. We'll just drag this out here in the center, make it about 30 centimeters tall, a radius of maybe 7 centimeters, and 3.5 turns. Okay, I'm going to come on over to geometry and just create a tie flow. And then here under tie flow, I'm going to increase the time step to one half frame, and I'm going to increase the sub steps to 20. Otherwise, the effect will be more like a rope than a spring. I'm going to go ahead and open the editor and drop in a burst spline and pick the helix. So as you can see, there's a number of particles being birthed along the spline, and that is being set by this percent value. So every 5% of the length of this spline is gonna create a particle. So if I was to increase that to 25% or 50, you can see how that's working. I'm gonna just reduce that to 1%. To create this spring, I'm gonna need to make each one of these particles a physics shape and then apply binds to them. But first I'll need to give these particles a shape and I'll use a shape operator. And I'm going to change it to 3D and select cube. I need to align these particles to create the most realistic bend effect. And I can do that with a rotation. I'm just going to change the orientation to sibling. And then down here under siblings I can choose both the first and last sibling. So now I can add a physics shape and a physics bind. And that is essentially all I need to do to create a spring and tie flow. If I let the animation play, I'm going to see how this is working if I enable show bindings. Let's change this color. You can see how these binds are linking the particles together. There's a couple ways to control the tension and the behavior of a spring. If and when I increase the time steps, that's going to increase the tension and stiffness of the spring. That's definitely going to affect how the spring behaves. I'm going to go ahead and lower that back down for right now. I could also change the bind type to joint. And then I'm getting more of a rope effect right now. And that's because there's almost no tension on the spring itself. So if I disable the swing settings. So if I set this to something like 100 million. There's more tension on it, but the behavior is inaccurate. And that's because the twist axis orientation needs to be changed to bind direction. And that's a much looser spring. I can also enable drive. And that's going to create more tension in the spring. A little bit more bounce. So now I'm just going to go ahead and create a cylinder. And just drag it up to the bottom of the spring here and create a copy and position it above it. Then I can add a birth objects into a new event and pick both of these cylinders. Go ahead and shut them off. Now if I add a physics shape into this new event and I play the simulation, then they're activated but they're not, there are no binds being created even though I have this physics bind operator with the family filtering to bind all. But it's not working because of the way tie flow evaluates events. So even though both of these events are being evaluated on frame zero, Typhlo is evaluating event one first. So at the time this physics bind operator is executed, event number two hasn't been evaluated by Typhlo, so it doesn't see it. I could add a physics bind here into event two under physics shape, but just to demonstrate, I can, I can select the bar here and I can change the evaluation priority to two, and now it's creating binds. I can come back into the physics bind operator and reduce the bind distance to maybe one centimeter. So now I'm just going to create a box beneath this spring. I'm going to make a copy and drag it up to the top. Go ahead and scale it a little bit on the x-axis. And then I'm going to create a cylinder. Just scale it down just a little. And I'll create a copy, smaller version of it. Maybe scale it up something like this. But I am going to come on over and enable simulation group 1 and 2 under the physics rollout. To enable the custom float channel and the cache rollout. I'm going to add a couple keyframes to this top box. 
So now there's a little bit of an animation. Okay, now I'm going to separate these two cylinders. I'm gonna do it with a surface test. I'm going to pick this top box and I will drag an object bind into a new event, connect that to the surface test and pick the top box. So now if I scrub through, you see it's not exactly working the way I want it to. And that's because this is still an active physics object and there's forces being applied. And now with the additional forces of the object bind, it's just causing it to behave in an unexpected way. So I can solve that by using a physics switch. I'm gonna change that to kinematic. And if I wanted to apply animation to this bottom box, I could just add another object bind in here beneath the surface test. So now I can use a birth objects in a new event. Select each of these cylinders, click add selected. I'm gonna deselect center all pivots. And I also need to separate these, so I'm gonna use a surface test for that. And I'm going to pick this top box. And I will use an object bind. Pick that top box and connect that to the surface test. Turn those cylinders off. Drop the particle groups into this event. I'm gonna change it to group two. I'm gonna drop one into this first event and change it to one. So now if I come over and drop a set target in here beneath the bind object, and I change the target to neighbors, and switch the simulation group to one, and choose absolute closest under proximity. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a display data in this event just to help you visualize what's going on here and check line to target. I'm just go ahead and shut these off for a second. So now all I need to do is tell my cylinders to align themselves along this line and I can use a rotation for that. I'm dropping in here beneath the set target. I'm gonna choose target align. And right now they're aligning themselves to the particle with birth ID zero, which is this top cylinder. But if I change the channel to target, change the timing to continuous, those cylinders will stay aligned on their target. I'm gonna go ahead and select both of these operators, hold shift and make copies, drag them over and place them beneath the surface test. In this set target under target filters, I'm gonna change the simulation group from one to two. If I turn those on, again, I'm gonna notice real quick that nothing's changed and it's not working. And that again is because of the way TIEFLOW is evaluating these events right here. First, it's going to evaluate this event and when it reaches this set target and it searches for a neighbor on simulation group two, it's not gonna find one because it hasn't evaluated in this event where a particle has been placed on group two. So it doesn't see anything. And since it's only set to run on on event entry, so it will only evaluate the single time. So what I could do is I could change the timing to continuous starting after a frame they will snap into position and then they will remain that way for the entirety of the simulation. Unless another particle, maybe not in this instance, but in other scenarios, if there was a particle that was on their target simulation group and it came within a closer distance than the particle that I want to be the target, it would switch targets and that would be undesirable. So for this, I'm going to set it to age and just choose from zero to one. And then after one frame, they'll snap into place. And if I needed that to occur immediately, that would be no problem. I could just select the birth objects and give it a spawn frame of negative one. And then lastly for this, I'm gonna change the bind type to glue. And I'm going to add a spline paths at the bottom of this event, change the mode to siblings, click create new. And then here, I'm gonna enable the tie spline mesher, give it a radius of one centimeter change the size to 16. Increase the time step to reduce or eliminate any wiggle. That is one way to create a fairly realistic shock assembly in Typhlo. And again, be sure to check back for a coming video where I'm going to add something very similar to this to an actor rig for a more sophisticated simulation. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch today. And if there was any part of this that you didn't understand or that you're having problems with, feel free to leave a comment. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe. That would mean a lot. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Take care. Thanks again. And see ya.